Several years ago, the museum acquired this partially restored Australian Grant tank. The previous owner had done quite a bit of work to it as it was converted into a farm vehicle after World War II. But unfortunately, he did not have the means to finish the restoration. Straight after the completion of the Oz Armour Jagd Panther, Daryl and Jesse were given this project to restore next on the 13th of September 2022. 316 days later, on the 26th of July 2023, this tank completed its first test lap around our track behind the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum. So sit back, relax and enjoy the full restoration process from start to finish of the Oz Armour M3 Grant tank. Restorations always start with stripping everything down and checking what's usable. Ryan, our mechanic, wanted to pull apart the final drives and inspect them for wear or damage. This tank was left out in the elements for decades, and since we're making it a runner, it's critical to ensure that these parts are in good condition. You can even see the ball bearing in behind that one, and you can see all the balls, and there's no hitting on those at all. Good as new. Yeah. What's Mac? Like Mac truck. Mac truck. Okay. Nothing wrong with these units at all. They're about as perfect as the day they were fitted to the tank in World War II. So Ryan makes up new gaskets and bolts them back on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just gonna come down. putting the silicon on the threads because these I noticed when we had it off that the lower section bolts uh, go through into the case so they go into the oil so better seal those when I put them in to stop the oil coming out the threads. While Ryan was checking over the final drive units, Jesse got to work on the back of the tank. So I'm going to be working on the rear deck hatches on, the, on our grant. The hinges have been semi-repaired previously and they've been kind of welded on, so not done properly. So what we'll have to do is get up there with a grinder and cut the existing bolts off and lift the hatches off. We'll just repair them, put them back together and then put them back on the deck. To help us undo these slotted bolts, we made up a little tool. It did have to go through a few iterations though to get it right. Ah, ah, wrong way. <laughs> that's the right way, isn't it? No, no, no. Oh, it bent the tool. Not the tool. Yep. Straight out. Yeah. 
Yeah, I got him. That's him. It's just jumped up. That's why it had so much tension on it. It was holding the actual um, back deck down. So obviously it had a bit of a natural curve in it. So they've had to press it down and then push those bolts through. Meanwhile, Daryl has been brushing up on his grant tank knowledge and researching how everything comes apart in preparation for the first big challenge of the project. Today's game plan is to try and get these road wheels off. We've already managed to take the nut off the other side. This is a pin. Here's a, an older one. But the problem with this, it's got a wood rough key, so you can't use this to turn it and help loosen it up. So we've got to hit it straight out. The shaft is hollow and threaded. With a bolt screwed in, the boys can slide a pin through the middle of the shaft and hit against it. It's coming out. Woo! Now the wood rough key is clear, the boys can spin the shaft and loosen up any rust or dirt that's causing it to seize. I'm at the extent I can't hit anymore. Yep. Got him? What's that shaft look like? Pretty good. Oh, good. Right there. One at a time. Yep. Oh yeah, there's one. Yeah, it's moving. Ready? Yep. Okay. Big physical effort from Daryl and Jesse, but all the wheels come off. After checking them over, Jesse gets back to work cutting the old rims off to prepare them for the new rubber tyres. Bang! Bang! <laughs> We need to pull out the old bearing assemblies. Daz has come up with a neat little system for doing well, it. We've got to get these metal retainers out first off. So we've made up a little jig, makes it a lot easier. When you go through the US manuals on everything, they've got a tool for just about everything. Well, we don't have access to those tools. We've got to try and come up with an idea that'll work. And I've got to try and save these metal flanges. That's locked in. 
the wheel. Alright, now it's just a matter of winding that out. It's the old grease in that. We managed to pull that ring off without damaging it. So I'll try to see if we can get new ones. If not, that's what we're trying to save these in case we have to reuse them. That gives us access to the bearing now. And actually this one doesn't look too bad. These are Timkins. That's the, the spacer between the two bearings runs on the inner race. Then this outer race runs on this cone. It's a cone, it's tapered, match the angle that's on this bearing here. So I've just got to flip this over, do the other side, and then that's ready to clean up. That's that actual seal we pulled out before. That's that one there. Oh, just on the other side. Just on the other side, Why yeah. Why is it so badly damaged on this side? Just wear and tear, and as a farm vehicle, it wouldn't get as much maintenance as it probably deserved. Winners are grinners. There we go. There's two of those bearings. Yep. Fortunately, original tyres in perfect condition like this are relatively easy to acquire. The boys have made a spacer plate so that it presses evenly on the middle of the rim. Ryan has moved on to inspect the differential and transmission. So and this feels really good too. It's it's nice and smooth. Um, there's no there's no tight spots. Good. the gearbox looks awesome the differential looks awesome um, so next step will be we'll have to free this handbrake system up or we'll free up this, the rest of the linkage it is a bit stiff you'll push that button down which will push this rod here down and then there's a linkage here and it will um, release so you can actually pull the selector shaft into reverse and it's just they put that there so when you're changing through the gears you can't accidentally go into reverse Get to that a little bit better. We'll shift the linkages out. 
This castellated nut is in a really awkward spot, and it's tricky to grip the other end of the shaft, as there's a grease nipple on the end of it. Has this got Mac written on it? Yeah, this is the Mac, this is the Mac gearbox. This is a big Mac. After many hot and frustrating hours, the shaft was removed and Ryan could start pulling it apart on the bench. Say that should unscrew there, because there's nothing else that can hold it in. spring and everything in there. You know, we pulled this uh, out and we put on the lathe and we just took a little bit off that because there was a lot of build up in here, that's why it was so seized. Back together, greased up, ready to go on. Maybe just make sure that This tapered piece is the handbrake. It didn't have a lot of wear, but it was seized up and pretty dirty. farm vehicle after the war so you can see how badly damaged this uh, rear roller is so it might have got a rock stuck between the tracks or something we just don't know you know it's had a hard life put it that way when we took this in to get it sandblasted we didn't realize how much damage is on the other one you can see here it's still got flaky rust didn't come out and they're right through and because this takes a lot of pressure of the track you know, we don't want anything to go wrong
track tensioning system was a little bit confusing at first, but a quick look at the manual sorted us out. The two bolts on the outside lock in, but the middle bolt has a left hand thread and pushes against the other side of the unit as it winds in. This opens it up to loosen the idler arm for removal or adjustment. Two days later, and the boys have the idler arms all cleaned up. I won't say I'm dead. Or should I? No, don't. <laughs> These are new idler wheels in perfect condition. Are we on to the <laughs> like a glove? <laughs> oh. Hey! These on. idler wheels are new old stock and are in perfect condition. We were really lucky to pick these up. You're nearly there. Yep, a uh, little bit more. Tiny little bit more. <laughs> no, that's not there. Oh, cut not calf, sorry, me. This thing. A glitter for mechanics. This never sees, it just gets everywhere. Oh, yeah. And some guy goes, ah, never sees. Mechanics glitter. Beautiful. Yeah, they'll wear in a bit. The boys didn't know it yet, but this day was going to be the most physically taxing of the entire build and would end in disappointment. Oh, we're going to start pulling these suspension units apart. We want to check the springs that are in them because they're looking like they're a bit bound up. This thing's probably been sitting in the paddock for 20, 30 years and before that it had a rough life. Looking for any damage, we've got to remove this cap here which is like acts as a grouser where the track runs across the top. Loosen those bolts, take that off and that gives us access to two cover bolts that we've got to remove so we can put some bars in to take the compression of the springs so they can't spring apart if anything comes loose. Fingers crossed. Beautiful. So we'll have a bit of a play around, tidy them up, see if we can get a hex head into it. Could be the first time this has been open in 80 years. Put Raiders of the Lost Ark music on now. <laughs> Just made up some uh, long rods. They'll come up from underneath, through the spring, and out through the top, and then we'll put a big, big 
big flat washer on top and tighten them up just to take the tension of the spring. You right there? Right, that's taken any pressure that's on those springs. Here. All seemed to be going well until we finally got to these bolts. That one's good. I'm just going to work this one while that's the, the weight's taken on those two. Yeah. Then I'll work the middle. Uh, I'll make sure my jack crackers are pointing away from the camera. <laughs> How are you going to heat under here? Not easily. I'll just get under here and heat the whole lot. Say when? It's an issue, the closest to me. Yeah. The middle one's good number five. Well, we got half a bolt out, which doesn't really help us. I'm done. <laughs> done. Cut the head off the new one. The trouble is, the bolts are screwed in from the bottom up, and the top of the bolt hole has no cover, so it's been left open for the rain to seep in and rust the whole thing solid. We had no choice but to cut the bolt and extract the rest on the bench. Go. I'm not dropping. It didn't drop. It didn't drop. There we go. No. Damn it. Oh, yeah, that's it. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Amazingly, all the other ones the boys did off camera didn't seize and the bolts managed to come out easily. Wheels and tyres might be in plentiful supply, but intact suspension springs aren't. It looks as though they've been bound up for a long time, but we're hoping that they're okay. Fortunately, there is a way to test them to find out. The boys are in no mood to trifle with any more bolts on this unit. Jesse is armed and dangerous with the oxy.
after this odyssey, Daryl needed a palate cleanser. What I'm trying to do is get this 37mm turret mount out. It's, it pivots, but it's locked on a bearing here. The other bearing was already knocked out, so I think that in its travels over time it's jammed up. It's locked in like a, a semicircle, but not quite round. It should fall out, but for some reason it's just jammed in there. Yeah, it's on a bearing, but it's a tapered bearing, so if I can get this cover out, so this there should be nothing holding it. So but now it's pushing onto this uh, like a cups, a metal cup, which acts as a uh, a seal for grease and, and dirt. And just see it pushing up against the edge there. Did you get that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I nearly did it. I want that out of here before I put this back down, you know what I mean? Right. The reason why we want it out, as you can see here, nice clean bearing. We'll tidy that up. It's a nice bearing, just got old grease in it. Then on the other side, the bearing was missing, so I have to heat it up and try and get this inner race off. So once I get that off, I can put a brand new bearing on and she'll swing nicely. And, uh, yeah, that's all we can ask for. Oh, it's just, <laughs> just on there. Beautiful, thank you. We'll just heat that up, give it a bit of a panel beat, flatten it out. You know, that'll come up, we'll, we'll make that nice. We've got the old bearing in a, uh, bearing out of it should fit over that. We'll use that as a bit of a mandrel or a, uh, a guide. Yeah. The only part of the turret ring that came with this vehicle was the ring itself. No race, no ball bearings, nothing. Luckily, we had a complete unit earmarked for this project, but it means the original one will have to be removed. Like the suspension units, it's been open to the weather for many years, and so the bolts are not being very cooperative. Jess has had to weld nuts on all of them. At last, our engine arrives. We've all been keen to see what it is and what Ryan thinks of it. So we have a Detroit 8P71 with a Allison Trans, I believe, on the back. So they, originally they had uh, two 671 Detroits in them, in line sixes, joined with a power coupling. Yeah, the reason why they did it was they would have had a lack of power back then with those engines. So this is an 8V. Seven one, so the six seven ones are an inline six cylinder, six cylinders. Each cylinder is seventy one V configuration, so that's why it has the V in it, eight V. So it's four cylinders on each bank, um, seventy one cubes per cylinder. Whoever's had it before, they've obviously rigged this up to, to run it on the stand, um, and I'd say they would have run cool, uh, water through it just to keep it cool. Um, yeah, but we'll get rid of all that when we put it in. <laughs> Big engine. Yeah, it's a massive engine. Hope, hope it fits. Oh. Big engine, big auto. Does so, that feel all right? Yeah, it feels good, yeah. Yeah, nice and smooth. Yeah. Well, it's not C, so no, it's that's a star, eh? That is good. This one is going to put out more power than I think both of those two engines together. So, yeah, this will put out about 400 horsepower and about a thousand fifty foot pound of torque. Yeah, it's gonna sound good. It's gonna be noisy. Yeah. It's gonna sound similar to the M110. 
Same engine as that. I mean, who wouldn't love that? We've been pretty worried about the suspension springs, but thanks to Jesse's dad, Peter, we've been granted access to his workshop's hydraulic press, which has a gauge that measures pressure. Just under the um, that graduation. The Grant Tank Manual has a formula for gauging if the springs are usable. If it holds a certain pressure at a set compression height, then they are good to go. But if not, there's no plan B. <laughs> Miraculously, all of them have exceeded the requirements. Um, all the, the springs, they held, held up really well with the pressure. You know, we put more pressure than what is needed to press on them and none of them seem to make any weird noises or irregular motions or anything like that. So they should be right for our vehicle. Oh, yeah, chuck it there. Oh, a few okay. weeks later, and the boys have finished cleaning up all of the moving parts of the suspension units. And after a quick coat of paint on the hull, it was time to reassemble them. Springs, wheels, track, everything. Reset shaft. Reset shaft. See how good that went on that shaft? Yeah, I can put the other one on from here if you want, Jess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got him? Yep. Go up slow. Look at that, look at it move so freely. That was two days of wire wheeling. It's lucky there's any material left Yeah, on. and two and days. Lube. Oh, and lube, and yeah. a lot of honing. A lot of honing going. Just behind you, rubber mallet on that, on that housing. Wear washers that go in between, they're, they're a wear washer. Do they come out on the full moon? Here we go. Right. Yeah, side shift to me a fraction. Yep. Yes, I think you can go out. Beautiful. Can you see it? Can you judge it from here where you are? Yeah. Oh, we're coming up to the wood rough key, right? Wood rough key up. Oh. 
One down, 11 to go. That's it, the running gear's done. Idlers, rollers, wheels, suspension, all of it refurbished and looking schmick. Between jobs and waiting for parts, the boys have been working on the business end of the grant. It was deactivated with the army, so we've just basically freed up a few of the bits and tidied it up and, and just putting it back. It'll never fire, but we just like to have it, it's because it's in a museum piece, have it, have it, have it on display and have it... You know, have it looking nice. Have it, have it looking nice, yeah. First thing to go in are the extractors. So we've got to ha have them up tight against the, the face of the, the breech itself. Up tight there, there's a little recess that they go into. Mm -hmm. And that's what actually pulls the shell casing out. Oh, let's see there. Right. So the breech box just slides in. Watch your, watch your hands. Yep. That's it. Yep. Right. We've got the crank pin here. It goes through a type of recoil spring that actually closes, automatically closes the breech. And on the other side it goes into the cocking arm. So when it fires, this recoils back and recocks the gun. Go up a bit more, up a little bit more, keep going. Yep, uh, a little bit more. Yep, it's up there. Yes. Yep. That was so satisfying. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, like what we have here is a, a arm with a thread on the end. And it goes through this casing and it's got a, a linkage of chain here. So we, we lay that as flat as we can and get it as long as we can. And it should be poking out here. You can see it's got a thread on the end of it. So this is actually the recoil. When you drop the breech down, once the extractors come forward, this is what gives the pressure for the breach to rise up again to, to lock to close. Keeps tension on it. Yeah. Straight. This doesn't hold forward anymore. Oh. We're on. We're on. Look at that. Oh, good guess. Where's that right lady at? The tighter it is, it'll spring back into place better. Right. 
So that spring keeps pressure on the base of the uh, extractors. So I open the breech, the big ratchet handle you pull down, so it should go down and the extractors should lock it in place. If you want to load it, normally the gunner would, would push it in with an upward motion with his hand so they don't get it jammed in the breech, he'd slam it home, but we're just amateurs here so we do it with a hammer, it's safer. Yep. So ready for this? Put that back in the position, otherwise it flings back. So, what awesome. about now, now technically it's ready to fire. So pretty much when you hit this, push this in, it fires it forward, which pushes this linkage across and flips this around. So if you watch here, it pushes this across, yep. the firing ah. plunger. Yep. And that releases the firing pin to shoot forward. Are you ready? And then the extractors pull the case out enough so you can grab it and pull it out. Wow. Do you want to do it again? Yeah, you wouldn't want your fingers in there, eh? No. <laughs> That's yeah. why we're using the hammer handle. <laughs> right. Sweet. And eject the case. Awesome. Beautiful. Nice, fellas. Yeah. Next step is to mount the 75mm gun before it gets too crowded with the drive shaft, yeah. stowage bins and turret basket. Oh, no. Oh, just get higher. Side. Missed it by that That's much. Good. It looks like our gantry is just a little bit too short, so it's time to bring in the cavalry. Well, well that was lucky. Yeah, it was dag it had a dag on the end of it, it hitting. You're a dag. Uh -huh. <laughs> The elevation handle is next. Chuck it there. Can you do it with a scanner up? Yep. No plan with Stan's contact with the enemy. The pipe running through the barrel is too long to slide out. It will have to be pulled back as far as it can and then cut short. Luckily, this won't be too much of an issue as the mantlet is supporting the weight from the front of the gun. Right. It looks like the boys have run into another issue. There's not enough room for the gun to pass the elevation handle and into its mounting position. It's got to come back out again. No one, no one died. No one died. No one died. Yep, we're in! I'm happy about that. Now the gun is locked in its mount, we can put the elevation gear back on the gun and bolt the two mechanisms in. It sounds easy enough, but now that the gun's in, the bolts are really tricky to reach. Yeah, this is going 
They've taken some away, just don't trust it completely. There we go. Jess bolts on the traverse mechanism and just like that, the gun is fitted. Originally, this model of Grand Tank would have had two inline six cylinder Detroit diesel engines. We've managed to acquire this two stroke Detroit diesel 8V71T. Its V configured turbocharged eight cylinders can produce about 400 horsepower and 1,000 foot pounds of torque. It's a really powerful engine and it's used in large heavy machinery and military vehicles like the M110 self propelled howitzer. The boys have to carefully drop it into position and then make up the mounts for it. Next day, the boys started on the mounts. All clear? Yep. We've just cut these bits of flat bar and we've chamfered them, so when we put the motor in later, it's just going to help locate it just because when we've got it on the gantry on the A-frame, it just wants to spin and go forward and back. So th these are just going to help us locate it. This is the Allison Detroit automatic gearbox that came with the engine. It may seem strange, especially to our US viewers, but coming across clutches, engines and gearboxes to suit setups like this in our town is not easy at all. If there's something out there that is close to working that becomes available to us, we usually have no choice but to just go with it. I know that sounds a bit strange coming from an organisation that builds and imports rare tanks for a museum, but that's just the reality of it. We tried to get a manual gearbox, which would have been a bit easier to set up, but the time frame we allowed for the build could not allow us to source one in time. So we made the decision just to make this one work. At first, we were a little bit concerned that it would push too much power into the existing gearbox. However, we figured out a way to tune it and control the power delivery to safe levels so it wouldn't damage anything as we drove it. It will mean that parts of the interior won't look exactly the same as how it would have, but it will run reliably and make all the right sounds. Fold it in. Happy days. Fold on. <laughs> Fold Thinking on. about having to swim when I get home. Doesn't look like you need one. Looks like you've already <laughs> jumped in the pool. In. These are the platforms that the driver actually uh, put their feet on. So they sit in the seat over the gearbox and on either side of the motor you've got these big tall platforms that they put their feet on. So the tillers are incorporated into these platforms and also uh, the clutch and the accelerator. We won't be using a clutch for our one because we've got an automatic transmission. This was a blown up one that I've had to repair. And then we found a bunch of intact ones, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Which one did Jess make? Um, which was a bit of a pain. So did you make all this? Yeah, so I've had to make all this from scratch pretty much. Man, there's less room in here now. It's just going to get worse and worse, isn't it? Yeah, it's not going to get any easier. No. Yeah, that goes like that. That just sits in there and it bolts down to the floor. 
And then pretty much how it works is the driver gets in. Uh, oh man. The These are their tillers. Clutch on one side originally and then accelerator pedal on the other. The handbrake. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is the gear lever on the manual transmission. Uh, like once we get the automatic gearbox all set up, we're happy with everything. We'll have to do two uh, two handles. So there will be one for the manual to select the manual gearbox, and then one for the automatic transmission. So you know, drive, neutral, reverse. A few weeks later, and a lot of progress has been made. Jesse and Ryan have been working hard on the engine, drive lines, exhaust, radiator, and fuel system. It looks like today we'll be ready to fire it up for the first time. Okay, so one of these is fans, our thermo fans. One's our, one's our light switch because we are going to run lights on the vehicle, like a running light. So we're going to be able to turn them on and off. Um, so we've got our start button. Uh, we've got our, our newer gauges with all our new senders and all that. We've got you know volt, oil pressure. We've got our main battery isolator. Just a light to let us know that the engine's on. And then we've got over here our main fuel shut off. So when we want to turn the vehicle off. So we'll pull on that one, we'll pull it out, it's connected to a cable that runs up and down here. And this one here is our air flap, so pretty sure they call it emergency air shut off. Um, so that one there is for um, you know, a runaway situation or something like that where we need to... If you're really yeah, in strife. That's right. This little primer bulb here um, to prime it up. These things do have a mechanical fuel pump that runs off the supercharger. Uh, once, once it's running, we don't need an electric lift pump. It's, uh, it's got its own lift pump on there to supply, supply the engine with fuel. Um, this is just going to help us get the fuel through all these fuel lines we've got and up ready to go so we're not cranking it over for too long. Should be good to go, yeah. We'll see what happens. All right, all right now I'll just turn the isolate, isolator on. Isolator on. Fingers clear. Yep. Smells good. <laughs> Got a whip for that. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep cranking it, then it should should fire hopefully. Thanks, Daryl. <laughs> no worries. I did the easy bit. Push this, turn that. Hey, that that looked good. Yeah. Did, did it seem okay? Seemed fine. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of smoke. <laughs> so that's just because we don't have an exhaust to yeah, direct it away. Right. That's just coming straight out of the turbo. So next we are going to hook up this transmission. So we've got to um, try and make something so we can select it into into gear. The braking uh, levers, we're going to connect those up. Um, we're going to put the drive shaft in. Um, we'll have to get the seat in there so we can physically sit in, sit in there and try and drive it. And then once that's in, we can try and uh, get it into gear and try and move it then. Go for a bit of a test drive. Maybe we'll just do one, a little one in the workshop first because we've still got the turret and everything to put on. we we'll see how it turns and all that sort of stuff. And then if we're happy with it, um, we'll take it out and maybe do a do a lap, hot lap, and see how it goes. Yeah. Right, we're going to try to go out putting this 37mm gun together into the mantlet. And this is what we're calling the rotor. And once that's in, that's, that'll be the hardest bit, then we can put other bits in and, and keep working from there. Just got to bump me across a bit, just hold there. Yeah. Well, Go up a bit, oh, go up a bit, oh, go in a bit. It's proving to be a little bit tricky to get into position. Up a bit. Yep, hold it there. That's looking good though. See how it's hitting on the top? Yeah. It's got to go down and in. Trial and error. Trial and error. That didn't work either. Let's try something else. Yep, go in. Whoa. Up a fraction.
success. The cradles for the pivot arms and the covers for the bearings go on. It's such a simple bit of engineering, but it's so satisfying seeing it all come together. That's nice and smooth, they just come have a go at this. The vision port on the mantlet is connected to the rotor by two small arms so that when the gun elevates or depresses, the vision port follows along exactly. Yeah, we've got to try and get it back in the same position to match the other one, otherwise the gun will be up and the vision block will be down. How close are you there? Not that crease. Probably that, uh, that's mine. The boys have fitted the gun shield and now move on to the cradle mount. We don't have a complete breach assembly for this gun. Fortunately, we won't be sending this tank into battle against the Africa Corps anytime soon. If we come across an appropriately deactivated one, we'll be sure to fit it in at a later date. That's the mount for the 30 cal. And these are the plates that enable the various parts of the cocking and firing assemblies to be mounted. One out of camera sound perfect. I've got it. It'll be okay. I'll get one in. Like that. Oh, that's all. Yeah. So once again, this we have never had this fitted yet. So there's two like, two bolts at the front there. Yeah. One. I've got one shorter one. Shorter one. The last job before the test drive is to bolt the drive shaft between the automatic and the manual transmission. On the weekend, 
Jesse spent hours painting the interior of the Grant tank. We've had some people write to us asking us why we chose white as the colour. White helps amplify what little light might be able to get into the vehicle and also helps the crew spot oil leaks. Everything is ready to be fitted, but before we commit to making the tank even more cramped than what it already is, the boys want to put the engine and transmission into a stress test. <laughs> does not look good. That's a uh, unburned diesel. All right. Yeah. Too much unburnt fuel is making its way through the engine, which over time will foul everything up with carbon and cause serious problems down the track. Time to head back into the workshop and see what the issue is. Pop smoke, yeah. Pop, pop smoke. <laughs> Ryan takes the air filter off and the muffler. Oh, there we go, there. Oh, there you go. That was meant for it. Perfect. That was meant for it. We'll just leave the exhaust in there and leave it yeah. like that. That's how that's how that's meant to be. They made that for that. That's how they oh, used yeah. to have it. Yeah. See if All this right. makes a difference. Yeah. <laughs> Workshop. It's time to start pulling things apart, but luckily things are not as bad as what they could have been. There's rag in there. Is there? Hey, look. Oh. One, it won't run. <laughs> How'd that happen? We were saying, I hope it is a rag because we know that what the problem's going to be. That's good. That's, good. <laughs> That's awesome, know. actually. How good is this going to run now? Yeah. <laughs> that's going straight to the pool room. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. This rag was placed into the turbo intake in order to stop debris from entering while the boys were working on the engine bay. And we forgot to take it out before putting everything back together. Little hiccups like this are inevitable and we always try to make light of it. At least it wasn't anything serious. Here we go. Listen to that turbo spool up. The suspension is performing beautifully as well. There is still some smoke, but that's a normal amount for this type of engine. Thank heavens for that. Ryan and the boys are happy. Now it's time to start fitting out the interior. That's our mate Ron. He's supplied the engine and transmission for this project, as well as some other bits and pieces. He's been an invaluable source of knowledge on this build, since he's somewhat of a grant restoration expert. He dropped in for a visit and ended up giving us a hand for a few days too.
headset side thing. Just a nappy change table, Daryl. That's it, the nappy change table. Oh, yeah. I'll pass it up and I'll give you this spur down. You right? Yeah. Can you see the hole? Yeah. Shouldn't fall now. Now this drops into the top, I think. Oh, I got it. smaller details to add in later but at this point we are ready for the turret basket and the turret. Now the boys start bolting down the turret ring. Oh I'll jump in and I'll do those other three now. Looks like it. Getting there? Hey, young man's game, mate, I'm telling you. <laughs> With the turret ring bolted down and secure, it's time for the turret itself to drop into position. Friend and Grant Tank expert Ron has very kindly offered to see the build through and to give us a hand until Oz Armorfest. While Daryl is working on some of the front mounting points for the truck grousers, Jess and Ron start putting the engine decks back together. Yep. Beautiful. Yep. So they had a feeling once we got started that all that probably go. Spoke too soon. Spoke too soon? What'd you say that for? Just two. Oh. Oh. <laughs> An important detail here are these two recessed or flush bolts. If we use the same bolts that we've fitted to the rest of the deck, the hatch wouldn't be able to open. Legend. Before 
before the day is out, we decide to get the 37mm gun in. The points on the mantlet that we are lifting from are the only holes in this piece that are threaded. They've been made this way so that lifting eyes can be securely fitted at the balance point to enable a nice even lift. Drop down a bit, Jess. Yep, come in a bit. It'll locate in that cut out. Hold on. Yep, take a bit of weight off. What's that? We've certainly had a lot of luck with this build, but Daz and Jess have worked really hard, as they always do in our restorations, to make sure that when the time comes to assemble, things fit together according to plan. Nice one, Daz. No worries, looking good. I'll oh, hop him back on that. Just drop it. Hit me on the head. The next day, Daz and Ron get straight into the turret basket and start fitting off all the bits and pieces Daz lovingly made and restored. This, this thing here? Yeah. This thing here, I'll just make sure we've got the spanner for it. This is the hydraulic turret reverse handle. Unfortunately, we don't have the skills or access to any other workshop that could get this system running for us, but we're including it for completeness. Yep. I think that's how we worked out. Yep. See, there's a lever here. And seat folds down. What's next? We'll do the other seat behind you. Yeah. Ah, for people to get out. Yeah. This is the pump for the hydraulic system in the turret. Again, we're only including it for completeness. But who knows? Cairns may yet develop a specialist automotive hydraulic industry in the future. Job done. No problem. This spring on the seat is part of an adjustment system to enable Grant tank gunners of different heights to be able to properly see through the periscope. It's hard to get in anywhere now, bloody hell. Capola now? Why not? Jesse beautifully restored this capola and was very careful to mask up the brass handle when priming it. Yep, fingers, everything. Yep, there you go. Yep, beautiful. Can you have a quick count, Jess? Yep. Yeah, right, no problem. There we go. Cool. Alright, go, James. You ready? Yep. It's going all right. Wow. It has gone firmer since we've done them up. Yeah, that's to be expected though, Still, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're on. Alright, so they're on. And they work good now. Oh, I got this to work too. Same as the one at the front. Awesome. So pull that apart. Got that to move back and forth. It goes in like that and holds the door. Yeah. Beautiful. Or they can fold all the way down. Also, that's the lock. So that slings around and locks on that one there. So when you're on the inside of the vehicle, that locates into this slot here. Like that. Job done. And then it's 
With the top coat applied, all that's left to do is to kit out the last few fixtures and accessories. These mesh screens were an Australian modification and were designed to provide the roof of the tank with standoff protection from satchel charges, anti-tank grenades and magnetic mines. Along with extra bolt-on front armour to give protection against 47mm anti-tank guns, these modifications were designed specifically for a mainland Japanese invasion of Australia and subsequent counter-offensives in the Pacific Islands. Next, the boys fit the track grouses to these rails If there was a fire inside the vehicle, a man on the outside could pull on these cords to activate the fire extinguishing system. We'll be using certified handheld fire extinguishers when the vehicle is in use, but we will fit these little handles for completeness. Live ordnance in this tank is a definite no-no, but these replica rounds will really pop in the turret basket, so to speak. Good. You may notice we're one short. We've got one in the spout. <laughs> the original seat for this type of tank would have had a folding back, but since we could only source one for an early war variant, which would have been fixed, Jesse has carefully added a swivel system to make it easier for the driver to get in and out of. <laughs> Needs to be, have you still got that rubber knot? It needs to be knocked in. It's much more cramped now, but at last it's time to take it over to the museum so that Jason can get to work on his unit markings.
markings to go on and finish, but with rainy weather scheduled for the next few days, we decided to apply them later and finally put this incredible project to the ultimate test. First, first test drive on the track. All right, good luck, mate. Jess has done three laps of our track, and apart from some excess coolant coming out of the overflow of the radiator, everything seems to be working perfectly. No, I'm going for a right. Oh, I'll jump in? Yeah. Don't go yet. Can I hop in too? Of course you can. Daryl just wants to a ride, a oh free ride. That'll be 300 bucks, mate. <laughs> hey, you got to pay before you get in. Start discount, 290. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is the first full restoration of a running vehicle on the channel. We've had our ups and downs with the project, but seeing it out on the track and now on display has made it all worth it. To think that just one year ago, there was barely a shell of a tank here. And now, after a huge effort from Daryl, Jesse and Ryan, here it is in all its glory. Nice one. Good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, no, good to, good to finally see it come to fruition and get a ride in it. You put a couple of months of work into it, and good to see it move. It's good, I'm really happy with it. Yeah? It's a bit, bit quicker than I thought it was going to be. Final, final product, it looks good. So, got a little bit of dirt on it now. <laughs> yeah, broken in. Broken in, so yeah, no, we're very happy with it. Congrats, man. Awesome. The Grand Tank is often thought of as a heavily flawed and unwieldy vehicle. While this might have been the case in some aspects, throughout making this series, I can't help but now admire it. It has such an iconic look. And while not as complex and precise as the German vehicles, the simplicity in design and quality of the parts are a testament to American industry and engineering. Even though it never saw active service, this tank is also a very important part of Australian military history and we are extremely proud to be able to display it here at the Australian Armour and Artillery Museum. Thank you for joining us throughout this amazing journey. That's all we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and I'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.